everyone and welcome. If you are looking for a highly secure cryptocurrency wallet specifically designed for traders, gamers, and developers, then the Engine Cryptocurrency Wallet may be for you. The Engine Cryptocurrency Wallet is packed with several security protecting features including dual layer NSA grade encryption, a custom keyboard that prevents key logging and data spying, as well as advanced ARM instructions that all work together to keep your funds safe. So, if that sounds like something you're interested in, this video is for you. Hey everyone and welcome, I am Robert with Altcoin Buzz and today we're talking about the Engine Cryptocurrency Wallet, which is a highly secure wallet that also has a lot of interesting features for gamers. So, in the first part of this video I want to go over all of the cool features that Engine Wallet has, and then in the second part of the video I'll go step by step showing you how to download, install, set up, and customize the Engine Wallet. So, the first thing I want to talk about is these unique security features. So the first is dual NSA grade cryptographic layers which shield your key store and your confidential data. So the engine wall is designed to be very, very secure. In addition to that, it has the advanced ARM instructions which basically ensure that the sensitive data in your phone is immediately uh, deleted from the memory, right? So that protects you from having someone come in and being able to find past data, past transactions, things like that. And then lastly, I thought this was really interesting. They actually have their unique keyboard that was custom designed for this app. So the keyboard itself was built from scratch to be resistant to key loggers or data sniffers, right? So there's a lot of people um, that I've had questions before where people ask me, well, what if someone puts spyware or a key logger on my phone when I'm entering my password or something like that? The engine keyboard is designed to give you protection from this. Now, one thing I always tell people is that I am not a coder. I am not a programmer. So whenever I'm looking at a new product that claims to be very secure, it's important to look at an independent third party audit. So they did a third party audit and basically the findings of the audit were that the overall security posture of the wallet and the backend API is solid for the required risk profile and the software is developed according to current security best practices which are required for a product that warrants a high level of security. We found no issues that could be used to compromise the wallet or the cryptographic key stored in the system in the scope of our penetration test. So for those of you who may not know, a penetration test is basically where a cryptocurrency project will specifically pay other people to try and get into it, to try and see what they can hack, to see what they can break, right, and see how well the product stands up. And the goal is to learn from this, and according to this, um, the, the overall implementation of Engine appears to be very secure. So although I'm not a programmer, they have a lot of interesting security features, and the independent audit says that the wallet is very secure. So one of the reasons that the Engine wallet is specifically good for gamers is that it supports a variety of token standards and has decentralized application browsing built into it. And I'll go through that in a little bit more detail when I get to the overview, but basically the Engine Cryptocurrency Wallet supports the ER721 standard and 1155, which are common standards for in-game non-fungible tokens. So if you're not familiar with non-fungible tokens, it's basically assets within a game, right? So it could be a character, it could be armor, it could be power-ups. And the Engine Wallet being with, compatible with these allows you to easily buy, hold those assets, whereas the integration with the decentralized applications allows you to basically take your wallet, whatever in-game assets you have, and integrate and use that within the decentralized application. So again, I know that's a little bit all up front, but I will get into more of that in depth as we go through the tutorial. All right, so what I'm going to do now is show you how to download and install the Engine Wallet. If you have an Android device, which is what I'm using, you're simply going to go to the Play Store, type engine and go ahead and download install it. I've already installed it to save a little bit of time so we're just going to open it up and you're gonna have several options. When you get to the screen you're gonna have the option of creating a wallet, importing a wallet, or watching a wallet. Now for our purposes we're gonna assume that we're completely new to this. We are simply going to create a wallet and you will need to agree to the terms of service. Now one thing I do not know because sometimes wallets will prevent screen captures for your security. So as I'm doing this, it might be possible that some of these um, things are not on the screen. The screen might be blacked out. So if that's the case, I'll add in screenshots into the video so that you can see what's going on. But the first thing it's going to ask us for a new wallet password. And it says use a minimum of eight characters. Now, one thing I want to point out is that if I enter eight characters, but my password is too weak, let's suppose I do A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H 
right? It's not going to let me use that password. So remember when I told you Engine is a security focused cryptocurrency Well, Sometimes it does a little bit of the thinking for you and kind of takes that out of your hands. So it's going to force me to use a slightly more secure password, which I will do and will confirm my password. And after entering your password, you will go to the next step. And what you'll see is that when we enter the wallet for the first time, it has a variety of cryptocurrencies that are listed for us. Now, these are just the defaults. You can add more to that. So let's suppose that I want to receive basic attention token, for example. I'll show you how to do that. So these are just kind of the standards. If we want to add more tokens now, we can. If we want to add more later, we can do that as well. So for right now, I'm just going to go with the defaults. We're going to click Create Wallet. And what it's going to do next is it's going to ask us to write down our seed phrase. It's going to say, do you want to back up your wallet? Yes, you always, always want to back up your wallet because if you were to lose your phone and you have that backup phrase, you can always get it back. And this is a big misconception. Remember when we entered our password? Your password will only get you into the wallet on this phone. So if you lose this phone, if you have your password, it doesn't matter. Your funds are still gone. If you have the seed phrase, you can restore it. So you need to keep both the password and the seed phrase safe. So it's going to ask us for four separate words. We're going to go ahead and write those down. And again, I don't know if you'll be able to see this on screen or not, but it's giving us only five words at a time. Okay, so we have written down all 12 words. And again, remember, I said Engine does a little bit of the thinking for you. It knows that some people are just going to click through that. So what it does is it actually asks you specific words that you have to go back and verify to show them that you actually wrote it down. So it's... Um, looking for word number 11, which for us is going to be interest. And again, this is a demo video. This is a wallet that I'm never gonna use. So in real life, you would never show someone your seed words, right? The only reason I'm showing you this is because it's a demo. It's a wallet that I'm never going to put any cryptocurrency on, maybe just a few cents um, to show you the demo of this video. So word number seven is going to be brain. That should be good. So now it's, it's verified that we have written down our seed phrase. And as you can see, we have kind of the default settings here for this wallet. So let's Let's suppose that we want to receive a cryptocurrency that is not listed here. There's two different ways that you can receive a cryptocurrency through a QR code and through a string of characters. So the first thing to receive a crypto, you're going to want to add it to your wallet. So we're going to search for some coins. We're going to simply type in BAT for basic attention token. We're going to click check and we're going to click update coin list. Now, as it comes default, Basically, anytime you make any kind of a change, um, Engine is going to ask you to enter your password. So I'm going to type in our password. We're going to confirm that, and then basic attention token is going to be added. So all we have to do if we want to receive basic attention token, we're going to click on it, select receive funds, and it gives us two options, a QR code and a string of characters. Now, if you're receiving Bitcoin uh, if you're receiving Ethereum, if you're receiving something where someone's paying you directly for a service, all they would have to do is scan that code. The funds go to your address. Now, let's suppose that you're withdrawing from Coinbase or Binance. In that case, you're going to want to use this string of characters here at the top. So you would simply um, copy and paste that into your withdraw address on Coinbase. Or if you're doing contract work for someone in a different country, you would simply email them, use that as your address, paste it in your address bar, and then send funds to that address. So that's how you can re receive funds. I'm also going to show you how to send funds. So if I'm wanting to send basic attention token or any other cryptocurrency for that matter, I can just go to the main page and then let's suppose I want to send it. I'm going to simply go to the same screen that I would to receive it, but instead of clicking receive, I simply click send. And all I have to do is enter the receiver's address. So I can do this in two ways. They can either email me or send me a string of characters, or I can scan a QR code. Now to do scanning the QR code, I will need to um, allow pictures and video. So let's suppose that I wanted to send basic attention token to my Coinbase Pro account. All I would have to do, pull up my Coinbase Pro account, and then I could allow it to take pictures. I could simply scan the QR code and then it's going to recognize this and automatically input it into um, the wallet field here. So this that it's inputting is the exact same as if I was to enter the string of characters. It just may be easier for certain situations. So it's the same thing. We're going to enter the amount of bat that we want to send and then we're going to adjust the sending fee. Now the sending fee is a function unique to the Ethereum network in that you have to choose how much of a fee you want to spend. If you set it too low, your transaction will take forever to process. If you set it too high, um, 
it's going to go through really quickly, but you might have paid more than you need to. So right here on the bottom, it just kind of has a sliding scale for slower or very fast. And we don't really know what fee we're paying. We just know slower fast. But if we want a little bit more control over that, we can click on the advanced mode here. And instead of simply doing slower fast, we can actually check the amount of price that we are willing to pay. So let's suppose instead of 20, we only want to pay 100, right? Or let's suppose if the network's not very congested at all, we only want to pay one. You can adjust that. And a good way to check is by going to EF gas station because it will tell you what the average price is, what a good safe price is to send so that you're not sending an excessive amount of funds. So that's an overview of how to send and receive cryptocurrency using the engine wallet. In the next portion of this video, we're going to go a little bit more in depth into the specific features of how to customize the engine wallet and then as well as the support for those decentralized applications, some of those non-fungible tokens. Okay, so now that we've covered most of the basic features of the engine cryptocurrency wallet, I want to get into some more advanced stuff, show you the decentralized application integration, explain a little bit about why engine's great for gaming and show you how to customize some of the functions on your engine wallet. So the first thing to talk about is the integration with decentralized applications. So one of the common things that people will want to do in their cryptocurrency wallet is trade one crypto for another. So the cool thing about Engine is that we simply go to the exchange feature and it automatically shows us what assets we have in our wallet. So right now I just sent one basic attention token to the wallet and let's suppose that I want to trade it for Bitcoin. I can enter one basic attention token and it's going to tell me the amount of Bitcoin that I'm going to get. Now, obviously, Bitcoin is super expensive. Basic engine token is relatively cheap. So number one, I'm not going to get a whole lot. But number two, um, I need a certain amount to make this transaction go through. But the thing that I wanted to show you is that I can trade directly from one asset to another. Um, in the wallet kind of through using these exchange partners. So in this example, it's a Changely. If I switch it up and let's suppose that I want to go from basic attention token instead, let's go to the DAI stablecoin. It's going to give me a different partner, the Kyber network. So that's one thing that's really cool. Another thing that I will show you is that it has a DApp browser which basically means you can access a lot of decentralized applications directly from within the wallet itself. So let's suppose that I wanted to go to the balancer protocol for programmable liquidity and I wanted to start kind of making my own cryptocurrency index fund. I could do that directly from within my wallet. So when I go to balancer, let's suppose I want to click exchange. So here we are on balancer. All we would have to do is connect and we're going to click browser wallet and what it's going to do is it's automatically going to log us in with our engine wallet. So we're accessing a decentralized application from within our wallet. So it automatically is going to connect us. It's going to know how much assets and what kind we have in our account. So it's already going to know that we have basic attention token. We could swap it for the balancer token or whatever else we wanted to do. So that's kind of the decentralized application integration. And then the other thing that I wanted to show you was how to customize your engine wallet. Because as I said, it has a lot of cool security features, some of which you might not always want to use, but I do want to show you that they're available for you. So the first thing you'll notice is that there's the currency. You can display the value of your crypto in US dollars, pretty much whatever uh, national currency you want. Auto add receive tokens, that's something that I always like turning on because a lot of people sometimes they'll make a trade or they will get a token and they won't see it in their wallet and they'll start freaking out thinking that something happened. Um, and it's it's there in their wallet, they just don't know it because they've not added it in. So if you have that auto add tokens on, it's, it's going to make things a little bit easier for you. Security, you can obviously change your password. Now, when I installed this wallet, it was set to do not lock. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom out to my main screen. So here I am on the main screen of my phone. Now, if I click engine wallet, it takes me right back in. I don't have to log in. What you can do if you want is you can set your wallet to immediately lock in a minute, five minutes, an hour, or five hours. So let's suppose you set your phone down. I'm going to change this to immediately. I'm going to log out and then I'm immediately going to go back into engine and it's requiring me to enter my password. So that kind of gives you a little bit of protection if you're one of those people that leaves your phone laying around or for whatever reason, you're just a little bit extra security conscious. So I am going to log back in and then I'm going to show you one feature that is available to you, but I do not recommend using it all because it can be very tedious. 
and that is the secure keyboard. So you can turn on or you can turn off vibration. You can also set this to random keys. So if you set this to random keys, when you're trying to log into engine, it's going to scramble your keyboard all up. So it's not going to be the QWERTY layout. It might be like one, Z zebra, um, x-ray, charlie. The numbers are gonna be all messed up. So if in the rare case there was some kind of key logger that was following you, you, it would think that you're pressing Q and you might be pressing two or a three. So it, it jumbles the numbers all up, which can be good for security, but it took me about five minutes to log in just trying to find all the numbers. So I, you can use it if you want. It's not something that I personally recommend. So that's a little bit of the customizations. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off this auto lock. And that's really about it for the engine wallet. One thing that I do want to touch on just very briefly is its support for gaming. And with the engine wallet specifically, we have support for these ERC721 and ERC1155 non-fungible tokens, which 721 is kind of the current standard, 1155 is kind of the standard that they're wanting to get to. So basically, um, without going into the, all the details, just know that engine supports NFTs, gaming items on the Ethereum blockchain. So it's great for gamers. They have what's called the engine multiverse. They have their own engine cryptocurrency. And again, that's something that would take a whole video to itself. If it's something you guys are interested in, leave a link below in the comments and say, hey, we wanna learn more about the engine multiverse. Um, but for right now, I don't wanna go into it too much. Just know that there's a whole host of games that are within this engine uh, multiverse and that are natively compatible with this engine wallet, with the engine crypto. So in summary, I just wanted to do a quick wrap up here. The engine cryptocurrency wallet is a very secure mobile wallet that has a lot of security features, some of which are customizable to help you feel safe and secure about your cryptocurrency being in good hands. It also has a lot of integration with decentralized applications and it's designed as a gaming friendly wallet. So in general, I hope you found the video useful. I'd like to thank you for watching. And if you have any suggestions for future videos, what you all want to see me cover, leave a link below down in the comments. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.